Okay, so it's 6 p.m. I'd like to open up the meeting. Um, and are there any adjustments at all to the agenda? Um, I should probably just mention that Paul Cerruti, the other select board member, um, probably won't be here tonight. Uh, if he does arrive, it'll be late. Um, he's working on a case over in Syracuse, New York, which is kind of a long ways away from here. Um, so, um, and let's see. That's good. Um, and also, I, I got an email from Brandy just before coming down here that um, she probably won't be able to make it either. So um, we may not have a town, we probably won't have a town treasurer's report. And there was a fuel agreement that we were going to approve tonight. Um, but we could approve it without seeing, I guess. But, uh, but, um, but we probably, probably should do so. Yeah. Yeah, I am too. So, um, so that'll probably um, either be approved by the select board coming to sign it at the town office, um, or we'll save it for the next next meeting. Okay. Any public comment at all? Hi, I have some comments. Sorry. Yes. Um, I am the co-director of the Woodbury Council, Jeff, and mm -hmm. since the wall went up. I have seen four almost deadly things happen there. Uh, flat tire, it's blind. I almost got uh, T-bones pulling out of there. Um, the rocks, it just doesn't slope right. And I have, I didn't complain until I almost got hurt. So mm -hmm. what I'm asking for is either some markations or cones. People are riding over that thing. Have you seen that? Uh, no, I haven't seen it, but it's in the plan. I'm trying to get a hold of the school, what's his name? John. 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 To see what's going on at the school, because we need to go back there. The two top rows of blocks, and when we get set back, that big white rock's coming out. Go straight the road down through there. Put some drainage in front of the bottom two rows, so you've got a place to park somewhere near the level. Okay. Those rocks are dangerous. I mean, they flatten the tire. And cars rolled over there and almost ripped the undercarriage off. I don't know, it slopes really funny and. You're talking about the crush rock that's in front. Yeah. 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 That is no, a we're put some, there's going to be some drainage there and it'll be brought up with three quarter inch crush ledge. Could there be some cones placed there for right now? Sure. People are still going to have to jump. The shop open this Saturday and I just see it all. Are you going to be there any time before Saturday? I could be. Well, <coughs> let's, uh, let's pick time and we'll all uh, rinse the cones and we'll set them up the way along. Sounds yeah. like a great thing. And if you all uh, are willing to include Michael or I, one of us will be there as well. Um, Easy. Let me see. We got things going on here Friday morning, right, Michael? Uh, yes. Yes, you do, Chuck. Uh-oh. Oh, Chuck. Oh, Chuck. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, this is before. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you're on everybody's list. <laughs> I, I am. Yeah. <laughs> Easy target. Yeah. Sorry, Chuck. But um, maybe what time are we meeting? It's 7.30. Um, I'm not sure how long it will take. OK, maybe we better do it Thursday. Thursday. OK. Or tomorrow. Or tomorrow in the morning? Tomorrow? Yeah, I think it's tomorrow at 8 a.m. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go to the town branch in the morning. I should be freed up 8 o'clock, 8.30. Okay. So I'll meet you here at 8.30? All right. And what am I supposed to do? Just, you know, like, just give some tell advice. Tell me what you want. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me what yeah. you want. Yeah, I want that girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was can't do that. that. I know. <laughs> can't do that. This is all temporary, that next week. Well, not all. Okay, so not the bottom all. couple of rows, maybe you're going to stay. The two bottom rows are staying. Okay. The two top rows are going to get set back. Yeah. And the school sign is going to come over and set between the bottom row and the top row with hopefully some nice burning bushes or something inside the sign. Or some graffiti. It's, it's going to it's gonna change it. It will change the dimensions of that space quite a bit. Yeah. So that road. The bottom won't change much. 
The bottom will not, but no. the top will. With the rocks like that, I mean, is, is that what you consider drainage? Not not a culvert per se. The rocks. So there'll be some forage pipe in there. Okay. All right. Yeah. The rocks are just too sharp. I mean, somebody's gonna get hurt. Well, we'll talk about it tomorrow morning, and we'll okay. see what we can do. Okay. Thank you for your time. All right. That's it. That's it. Thank you, Miss Kerry. Now I'm gonna go back to class. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Okay. I'll see you in the morning, Maggie Terry. Oh, okay. Okay. Good. Um, so, next on the agenda is to approve the bills to the town. I haven't seen one pile. Um, so, I know that we both reviewed the other bills. Um, okay. So, I'm um, just trying to think of maybe. We should just approve them by signing them this time around because I haven't seen the, the last batch yet. I could look at them at the end of the meeting. So it's approved by signature? Yeah. Okay, okay. so we'll approve right. by signature. Um, and then I have a copy of the minutes from the last meeting. Um, and it's a little awkward for you to approve them because you weren't able to be here. So this is another situation where um, I guess we'll approve them um, by signing them. Um, did you have any question about the minutes? Um, I did not. You did not? Okay. I did not. I reviewed them. But I okay. Not. All right. Okay. Um, so I guess that's how we'll approve the, the minutes um, from the last meeting. Um, I'll sign them and then I'll leave them at the town office for Paul to sign. So next on the agenda is the town clerk's report. And I don't have much this week, and there weren't work last week. Right. Yeah. But I did get a message from Secretary of State, and we have to get ready to start purging our voter list. Okay. So mm -hmm. I'll be getting stepped up on that, and All right. then make arrangements for everybody to come in. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm not really sure how that process gets done. So, yeah. but no. Okay. And. That's basically it, sorry. So, okay. That's okay. No, I under, under the circumstances, you have a good reason. Um, I wanted to ask if about the uh, applications for the uh, road crew member. Um, we got one completed one in. Mm -hmm. One person asked me to send them the application by mm -hmm. email, and mm -hmm. have not gotten that back yet. Okay. Well, the, the deadline was yesterday. Yes. Somebody came into the office requesting an application. Okay. I said the deadline was yesterday. It was a good chance they wanted to look at it. Okay. What do you got? Well, it's all going to the town office. That's why I was asking. Yeah. So, um, we could extend the deadline or we could just, well, I mean, basically we have one complete application. Mm -hmm. Um, what are your thoughts, Chuck? You're going to have press by somebody that I'm going to vote for over him. Okay, I understand. Um, and I, I am of the same opinion. Um, I guess we did have a deadline, um, and that was stated in the original, um, you know, when we put it out, which was just about a month ago. I think it was around... June 15th, 18th, that we yeah. sent it out. Uh, hmm. Certainly simplifies things, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um, what are your thoughts, Chris? So the one application that we've received is from um, Peter Daly, yep. who's already a part-time road crew member. And I think, it's a, I think that that is a great option. Mm-hmm. My only concern is that if you don't have a pool of applicants, it's hard to judge. But it is. The only thing I can say in defense is that I've watched him with the escalator. He's pretty fair on the grader. And it don't matter what you ask him to do, he's right into it, right clear to his ears. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the way this day and age is, if they're not applying for jobs right now, as many jobs as they are you're going to have a hard time finding somebody that's going to want to work like he does. Right. That's my opinion. Right. Sounds like a reasonable opinion. Um, 
I, you know, I think that we still should go through the interview process. Um, yeah. And um, hopefully, you know, Paul, um, yeah, I kind of wish Paul was here just to get his opinion on the matter. Um, but I, I think we should still um, go through the interview process. And you can also it's sort of help yourself to a chair and, and just sit. So this this whole space is available. There's no dance room floor here at all. So. Um, so. So. My thinking is is that we would schedule a special select board meeting, um, inviting you, of course, Chuck, and and perhaps Greg Parkhurst also as the road foreman um, to have an inter interview with the one applicant that we um, that we have um, and it would be sort of a, f a formality um, but I think it would be good to, to go through that process. Um, well I think we definitely need to make sure all our eyes are done and the T's across. Right. And, yeah um, yeah and that would be that would be the normal the normal process. Right. Um, uh, yeah. I know that Greg is in favor of it, and so am I. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And well, you know, personally, Greg. personally speaking, uh, I am too. So, um, yeah. When we should probably do this um, soon. Maybe not this week. The week is pretty well filled. But uh, is there an evening? Um, or we could do it during the daytime too. Um, let me try to figure out what, what in the day you, you've got other work that you're doing, right? So, oh, yeah. so probably evening would be a, a better time. Or, well, I need any time to let me know what they're going to do. All right. So, All right. I mean, this would be a special select board meeting. Um, it would be held in executive session, um, right. so um, it wouldn't be open to the public. Um, let me, th I'll put together some times and days and send it out and we'll see what works for everybody. I'm not sure of Chris's schedule or Paul's schedule at this point in time, so um, we'll try to find a time, and or Peter's for that matter, so. Well, I would like to say one thing. I, sure. Uh, I don't believe Peter's schedule would be a problem, but um, I don't think we better drag our feet too long. Okay. Because I know a couple of things. Okay, we could try to schedule a meeting this week. Um, we, we, it has to be worn for two days. Or actually, with a special meeting, meeting one day. Uh, Bigger pardon? I would try for the first of next week. First of next week, okay. Um, I know Monday evening is out for me. Uh, Tuesday evening would work. You can make some work. Okay. Um, all right, so um, let's make that as a tentative day and see how that works for Paul. Uh, July, let's see, today's the 12th, so 13th, July 20th. Six o'clock? Sure, okay. yeah. All right. I know I'm coming outside. Get my ass home and get washed up. Yeah, yeah. It could be a little later if you want. No. That's good. Okay. All right, so that was kind of covering part of the town hiring report, but it's done. It's, it's done, so. Um, so Brandy is not here, so there's no town treasurer's report. Um, if you want to talk to the gentleman and lady first. Well, they're actually next on the agenda, and uh, Patty is here, um, and then I assume that everyone else that's here is here to uh, discuss the West Woodbury Cemetery? Okay, all right. And do you know, folks know of anybody else that was planning on coming, because we are um, ahead of schedule a bit, by about 10 minutes. No? All right. Okay. Well, you're here, um, and I have a copy of the letter that the Cemetery Commission came up with. Um, so maybe uh, for the record and for our scribe, could everybody who's here introduce themselves? Tim and Brenda Hall. Okay. Mira Set. Mm -hmm. Dan Kirshner. Mm-hmm. Joyce and Lockheed. Okay. 
Were you able to get all of that, Tegan? So maybe, yeah. What's your last name? What's that? And the first name? Bear. And Patty Garbeck is our Cemetery Commission Chair, I believe. <laughs> um, okay, so just thinking of the best way to... Um, what do you think, Patty? Should I just read the letter first from the cemetery? Why don't, why don't we start there, and then I would like to open up the floor for comments. Um, and... Uh, and I'd just also like to say, let's have a civil discussion about this, okay? So um, this is a letter that was sent to the select board um, back at the end of June um, with um, concerns and uh, suggested outcome from the Cemetery Commission. Um, so, um, and it was written um, and put together by Patty. It was not, okay, all right. Um, so in December of 2019, the Cemetery Commission brought to the select board the offer of land to be donated to expand the West Woodbury Cemetery on the condition that the donor and three of his friends could be buried there for free. It was represented at the time that it would not cost the town anything. None of the current cemetery commissioners had, been, had seen the land in question at the time. And I should just add, mention too that, that the cemetery commissioner who was approached about this is no longer on the cemetery commission. Since then, it has become clear that accepting the land would not be in the best interest of the town of Woodbury. There are the following factors. By Vermont statutes, the survey of the cemetery expansion land would be required. This would cost the, the town between $1,000 and $5,000. And then a side note, we received a range of estimates um, on the cost of the surveying. There would be other added costs associated with the expansion, such as new fencing and lawyer fees. Although dried up at the moment, a stream runs alongside the cemetery and would likely be too close a water source to allow interment aside from cremated remains. It may not meet the required setback from water sources, and these are setbacks set by the state um, due to proximity to a neighbor's well. Um, if the select board decides to move ahead, we recommend they hire an attorney to ensure all legal requirements are met. Several of the cemetery commissioners visited the site with Patrick Healy of Green Mountain Cemetery, who is also the president of the Vermont Cemetery Association and very knowledgeable. He strongly recommended against accepting the land. The would-be donor continues to insist on its suitability. We respectfully request the select board to clearly state that the town of Woodbury is unwilling to accept this land for the expansion of the West Woodbury Cemetery. And then it was signed um, by all of the present uh, cemetery commissioners. And then I, I'd like to add one other caveat. Um, the cemetery commissioners are an elected officials in the town, and I'm not 100% sure that the select board has any say in this matter at all. Um, we do have a say when money is being spent. But I don't know if it's up to the select board to make a final decision on this. Um, and I will be contacting the Vermont League of Cities and Towns to determine whether or not um, that's true. Um, and I will let everybody know that um, when I know it. I'll be, I'll be doing that tomorrow. Um, but I would like us to have a discussion about this issue. Um, and first of all, I'd like to hear, um, obviously we sort of heard from Patty because uh, she was a part of the letter. So I'd like to hear um, from any of folks that have come in. Go ahead, Bear. Okay, um, I'm 
the landowner in question that yes. wants to do this, um, I'd like to start to say, I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be a burden to Woodbury. It's not going to be a burden to our neighbors. If we can't make it work where it is, mm -hmm. um, I'll move it. Mm -hmm. If I can't do it through the town, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, the town doesn't have to have a summer. I can have a summer day. Yeah. So on your property, yes, you so can. What I'm getting at is, you know, just in in the effort to be, you know, open mm -hmm. and, and candid about everything. There's going to be bodies planted in that property. Okay. Um, and we're going to do it right. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do it. I just thought it made sense to just expand the existing cemetery. Okay. Um, that is not a crick that goes behind it. It's on a mountain. It's, it's runoff. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it goes right by the existing cemetery. Mm -hmm. Hasn't been a problem since what's the earliest period? 1841. 1841. <laughs> so, I mean, I even offered to build a retaining wall there mm -hmm. if such a thing would make a difference. Um, I thought it was going to be a no brainer. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's not. Mm -hmm. um, but there's people with historic ties to the mountain. Mm -hmm. I would like to mm -hmm. be playing there. Mm -hmm. I want to facilitate and help make that happen. Okay. So this is our mission. Um, so, you know, mm -hmm. if the town of Woodbury wants to know part of it, I, I think we can just ditch it. I mean, just go on without you guys. Mm -hmm. um, I was trying to do it so that other people could take advantage of plots like historically that are in the existing plot. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, if that isn't enticing to Woodbury or the Cemetery Commission, that's nothing to me. Okay. But I just thought it would appeal. Plus you could sell the lots, you know, reap some money from the coffers to maintain existing mm -hmm. cemetery in, in the new postage stand. Okay. So I have a question for you. Um, if the stream is an issue, um, and it would be the state that would make more of an issue of, of it, I think, yes, than the I town, um, is there the possibility of expanding the cemetery away from the stream? I can go behind it. Okay, so there is that possibility. There's a lot of high land there, too. What's that? There's a lot of high land behind it, too. I was up there the other day looking at the roads. Yeah. Ian and, and I were kind of talking about it the other day. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of rooms. Okay, so, so, so the expansion could happen somewhere else where the stream wouldn't be an issue. Yeah, and, okay. and basically um, between the old cemetery and what they're calling the stream mm -hmm. um, is the setback that the neighbors are concerned about, 160 years old. Um, mm -hmm. So if we go on the other side of the stream, it takes that out of the... Okay, well that, that might... That might be So helpful. what I'm getting at is we're going to move forward with this right. and try to make it work for everyone involved mm -hmm. and try to address everyone's concern. And, you know, your guys' concern is it's going to cost you money, so, you know. Actually, you, that's... Maybe you don't have to do it. That, well, that's, that's not our primary concern. Yeah. Our primary concern is making sure that it actually works for everybody. Yeah. Right. right. So. Well, we want it to work for everyone, too. Yeah. We're not looking to cut okay. corners. Yep. And, and do it haphazardly. Yep. Mm -hmm. I, I just took yeah, the situation that I thought was. Mm -hmm. So, I think that. And all of a sudden, the flags are. Mm -hmm. I, I so, think that that uh, a diligent survey of the of of the appropriate property mm -hmm. is worthwhile. I think so too, and and I think um, before that survey happens, it would be good for both sides of the issue to come to some resolution over where the expansion will happen, and then we'll know what to survey. Um, so. Can I talk to, actually, there really are sides to the issue. The state has a water, the stream, and we have no real fans of the cemetery. Actually, it's probably the two people um, that have spent more time, we actually, four years ago, we brought the cemetery back in the woods, built it up, maintained it. We love it. I think it's a great idea. Um, Things right now we would only need a 35 foot buffer to for the proposed expansion to fall within the state's requirement for 
this is from the water supplies. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's good. I mean, I totally get it. I, I have great respect for the community and people up there. And I know that more like the blood, all the um, people that work before us have been the same thing. I think it's really good. Mm -hmm. I love the idea. So they weren't really two sides here at all. So as long as the yeah. setback that was one of Yeah, I, I, I think they, they, they say it's 200 feet. It's 200 feet. They, and, okay. yeah. you know, I, I think it's 200 feet for a, um, a dug well. Um, and another piece, we do have a surface well that supposedly requires 500 feet, but we would never imagine that it would be used. So I would say that's not even an issue. Um, so there's really no issue other than, I mean, I actually looked at it, and with a 35 foot buffer, meaning just further back from the road, it's mm -hmm. 200 feet. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I mean, that's. So it seems like we can make this work. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it might be a different, a different dimension of the parcel, but. Let me, let's just check in with Patty. If if this if the expansion were to happen in a different way, so that the stream is not um, impeded, it, impeded. Right. Um, the big concern of the state statute and that, you know, we right. said, yeah, go for it. Would yeah. it be an expansion if it's a separate block? That was my question. Mm -hmm. Is this considered a private? Unfortunately, what I've read about this so far. And I'll, I'll do a little bit more due diligence. But what I've read so far is that when you expand a cemetery that is more than 100 years past, it is considered a new plot. Even if it's adjacent? Even if it's adjacent. Okay. And so we're expanding an existing cemetery. However, it is actually a new cemetery in a way. Okay. Um, so there are different protocols that have to go into play. Uh, the original cemetery didn't have any of those protocols. No, those statues didn't. Those exist. statues didn't exist. And so to to expand it after this period of time means that we have to follow a different set of rules. So I think that we just have to. But if this. If, well, if we can follow setbacks, and you all agree that those setbacks are reasonable, then there's really no big deal here. It's just it's a different way of approaching. Well, mm -hmm. This is this process has been going on for quite some time. And I'm sorry, sir. I'm, some, I'm, I'm I'm a little bit new at this. Right. Some, some <laughs> Chris is a newbie on the select board. Um, that are interested well, not in the are getting any younger, and most of them grew up on a mountain. As far as I have no problem if the town still wants to be involved, if we take this expansion and we put it here on everyone's approval, neighbor to state, whatever, pop right here. I mean, if the town of Woodbury doesn't want to invest in it and take it over and sell plots and stuff, then I'm going to look into doing a smaller type version, uh, be like a private, and whichever we can get done quicker. Mm -hmm. um, I want to make sure that it's going to happen and these people that are interested in um, being part of the mountain for eternity have that opportunity. Right. I don't want to speak for Paul or Michael, mm -hmm. um, but I think the town would like to be involved okay. and make sure that we have an additional cemetery right. for a perpetuity. And, you know, we should also um, have a statement from the Cemetery Commission about if, if, because it's really up to them to, to determine whether the town would be involved. Um, that, that's my gut feeling on, you know, um, I mean, they're elected officials and technically us, select board members are the elected officials. We really have no say in what they do. Um, same with the town clerk or the town treasurer. They're kind of their own people. They make their own decisions. If the select board doesn't like it, um, that's too bad. Um, so I, you know, I would prefer that it still be, this is me speaking personally as a select board member, would prefer that, um, that it continue to be a town cemetery. Um, and, uh, but I would definitely, um, want that determination to come from the Cemetery Commission also, and if they f still f feel otherwise, then um, um, then I would probably respect that, that decision, and, and it could be a, a private cemetery, but um, it would be nice if it could continue as a, one of the town cemeteries. Um,
So just a second, Pat. Robin had her hand up just a moment ago. Did yeah, I was talking with one of the prior cemetery commissioners. And what he suggested mm -hmm. is maybe get like a concrete box and then put the casket in that because he says there will be nothing that will be able to see the out of the concrete. That's 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 that is, that is that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. That's state, yeah, that's state. You know, I see the one that has the holes in it. I guess some of them have holes in them, so uh, no, no, no. 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 Okay. no. It's no. by law. I mean if we're yeah. going to expand the cemetery, we have to we have to follow state law. And so there has to be a, a basically a, a cask that holds the casket in place. Yep. Which is going to be sealed. It will be. Mm -hmm. So nothing will leak out of that. Hypothetically, no. But so there's still be an issue with the water source. Well, there's still, right? a, there's still a setback required. Yeah. Yep. And as long as we're following those, those guidelines, we are, I, I think you gentlemen have been up there, you're into ledge a bit. So, you know, there is some issue with, with well, ledge. I don't know how much ledge there is there, but there's a lot of stairs there's also But, you know, I mean, requirements are requirements. We meet those requirements, then, I mean, it's well, really, it's really not in the hands of the town. To make it meet the requirements. I mean, I don't see how the town can do it. I, I think that what could happen is um, if, the, if there is a new proposal or a change in the original proposal um, that the cemetery commission could look into what those requirements are and the town could um, engage whatever state official agency is needed to get the proper approval from the state um, and then we go from there. Um, that would be my understanding of, of how this process might unfold going forward. Um, but that's, I may be wrong too. I've never had to deal with this before. So, um, Patty, any thoughts? And, and Pat, um, actually Pat, um, you had your hand up, go ahead. The Pat mm -hmm. did, did you have a comment or a question? Or? I'm just saying from an overview, um, the cemetery commission I've been on it for a while and some people who were on it longer. Mm -hmm. We've expanded Wickery Cemetery, we've expanded South Wickery Cemetery with a nice large piece. We had a survey, both those new pieces. Mm -hmm. We had a guy who surveyed at Russell Benton, um, planned and rebar down on 12 by 12 feet by 14 feet, so you know what you're getting. You're all getting the same thing. And there's no problem with water in either one of those, but there's a problem with ledge in both of them. Mm -hmm. We've had the whole back of the new, of not the newest, but the new part of the, the former new, new part of the South River. Mm -hmm. It's got ledge running right across the top of it, and we had people buy a plot there, for instance, and they, it's ledge, you know, mm -hmm. and there's water coming out of the ledge, which just commonly happens as well. Mm -hmm. So I think for the, for the retarded, the people who are proposing this are getting, you know, will be paying nothing on the, on their part for the web, for the grave site, but we'll be out, I don't know, we've got an estimate here from Patrick Healy at the Green Mountain Cemetery. He's gone and looked at it and saying, you know, he's telling us there's a cost to it. You know, he's estimating between $1,000 and $5,000 just for the survey. Mm -hmm. and, and that's without, you know. I mean, additionally, from my point of view, as an old person, it's a hard place to get to compared to, I mean, we used to motorcycle up there, and it's charming. You've got a view of the uh, Green Mountains and, and that. But there's, there's other problems, you know, that you don't know what you're getting into. I guess if you live there, it's not a hard place to get to. From For those of us who live um, in this part of Woodbury, you can't get there from here unless you want to deal with uh, what's now called the Ho Chi Minh Trail to get there or drive a half an hour um, to well, get to West Woodbury. Well, we cycle off there directly. We had yeah. the time we were going, we had to go around by Hardwick and then go up and 
I mean, yeah. I don't think everybody, uh, it's nice having a church nearby mm -hmm. where you have a burial, mm -hmm. and nice having a place for people to park. And, I mean, I'm just thinking from the point of view, our cemetery commission does not have a large salary. We're looking at several other projects. I mean, the, okay. the uh, Buckley Cemetery Spence Fall Park, I know, we put that in new a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, just from that point of view, I would be a lot, I would a lot of money for, for something that isn't necessary and as charming as it might be. We've got plenty of room in two other cemeteries that are more accessible. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's all I have. Yeah, I mean, the, the, go ahead, Pat. Thank you. Patrick did not give the estimate. He called two different surveyors, and Kenzon called one, and I called one who I cannot remember his name. Name right now. So mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, again, speaking for myself, you know, I understand that the cemetery commission has a very limited budget. It's pretty much covers the mowing um, and uh, maybe a little bit else. And if this was an issue that town residents, um, West Woodbury town residents, feel pretty strongly about, I think that the select board could discuss and perhaps approve um, spending money out outside of the cemetery commission budget for the survey um, that's just me speaking personally at the moment um, uh, chris Coe disagrees with, with with that statement okay so that's not so much an issue i mean the issues that concern me the most were the um, the stream and just any kind of repercussions that the town might get um, from some state agency that wants to prove a case and, and, you know, kind of get on our backs about something that we did without their approval. Um, so, Tim, um, I want to apologize for ne never getting back to you. I, you didn't leave me a phone number and you aren't listed in the book. Yeah. So, um, but I'd that's, that's okay. that's be glad to hear from, from either of you too about this. Um, I've done a little bit of research on this, have, have any, and Patty and I have had a couple of conversations on the phone with some lengthy mm -hmm. ones that's been very helpful, and she's turned me in a couple of directions on some things, but have anybody on the board read the, I think it's called Digging Deep from the State of Vermont Secretary of State website about some areas you have? Mm -hmm. um, the law that was cited in there for waters and streams I have it on my truck, I forgot to bring it in. I think it's like 5160 or something. Did you look that law up? That law is very gray. And nowhere in there does that law say private wells. That law pertains to transient, non-transient community, public water systems. So nowhere in there does it say private homeowner wells. And I think it's one of those things where it's how good of a lawyer do you have or how good of a lawyer can somebody get to mm -hmm. pick that out of that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it talks about different kinds of wells, it talks about different kinds of streams and so on and so forth. Um, but in there, in nowhere in any of that does it cite any concern of erosion in the cemetery. It more cites streams that run over aquifers or mm -hmm. streams that roll over a transient and non-transient community mm -hmm. dug or drill bedrock wells. So and, and it may be in there, and, you know, maybe on how you perceive it as its road. But the mm -hmm. only thing that I ask, and Patty and I have these conversations, is you got a man that's given land to the town mm -hmm. for free. Mm -hmm. Nobody gives land away for anything anymore. The three of us sitting here, Dan, Bear, and myself, my brother's been involved, we're willing to do all the footwork for this cemetery. Mm -hmm. The digging, the stumping, the clearing, we'll build a fence. Mm -hmm. We'll take care of it for the next few years. I mean, I can say that I will for the next few years that I'm alive. I can't speak for these guys, but... Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and as 
you know, I respect Mrs. Kahagan's, you know, input on it. You know, where she says there's plenty of other places to go. And it's like Chuck said, the reason we're doing this is there's there's some folks in their 80s that grew up in West Woodbury. Mm -hmm. That's where they came from. And that's where they want to find the rest. That's totally understandable. That's the push and that's the effort behind this. It's mm -hmm. not to make war with neighbors. Mm -hmm. It's not to ruffle any feathers. This is more of a, a, a roots type mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. that us as citizens and taxpayers, um, which all of us are mm -hmm. for that area, are willing to put forth the time and the money to make this happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, bears kind enough to do this, so us as neighbors that jump on board, mm -hmm. um, it'll all cost money for some way, and I'm not sure where these estimates are coming from for this surveying, but I had my lot done in Hardwood two years ago, an acre and a half downtown, and it was 2400 bucks. Yep. I don't know where the 5000 comes in. Um, I'm willing to pay, in my side of the family itself, We've probably got between eight and ten plots that we like. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to pay those up front. I'm willing to pay for bears so it doesn't look like it's a, a, a give and take. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I seriously do not think it's going to come down to a monetary issue. Mm -hmm. It's going to come down to neighbors working together and making it happen. Whether we set it back a little bit more, if that's how that law really reads and it really pertains to private dug wells or drill wells, we adjust it a little bit to make it work, and we try to make it work so that the town doesn't have a huge outpouring of money for it. Mm -hmm. But yet, yeah, it would be nice that the town gets it on their books, and it is a town cemetery because us in this room are all going to be dead someday. And then that mm -hmm. will always be there to Continue. be taken care of. I mean, Bear's mm -hmm. very kind with the private cemetery thing. That's a good idea. But 50, 60, 70 years from now, it, it could be treated. Again, mm -hmm. nobody ever knew what the effort was that put into it. So. Mm -hmm. Well, for me, you know, the money part is not that great of a concern. I, um, I, mean, I would like to see that everybody is okay with whatever decision is made for the expansion, both the cemetery commission and the majors. Um, and if there are already ideas on how to, to accommodate their concerns, um, I'm, I'm fine with that. Um, I think what would need to happen, I think, is that the cemetery commission should probably, if there is some type of proposal or for a change that, um, that they could discuss, um, and if they're okay with it, the, you know, the town will find the money to pay for a surveyor. Um, we'll find it. It to me like these guys here are almost up for to do all that. Yep. Uh, is, yeah. is that what I understood? Well, we're gonna, like you say, one way or the other. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, we're like you. We want to cost us the least amount of money. Uh, sure. uh, right. sure. But we don't want money to stop the process. Right. Yep. So, and, so I think that we can probably find some funds. Mm -hmm. we, yeah, we can. And maybe you can match some funds, get it done, make sure that we're within state regs, right? Meet you halfway. Well, we want to do it right. Yeah, yes. we do too. And we, we we would, do I'm right. speaking personally, I would like it to be a town cemetery. We'd yeah. like I know, and, and there's two of us speaking the same way. All right. So if we do it right, and you're willing to match some funds, we'll get it surveyed correctly, make sure that we know exactly what we're getting into, and then we go for it. With that being said, and that's all, that's, that's great. With it, without having it moved back, would there be an option if this law does pertain to private wells, could you make the front half of the cemetery cremation only and the rear half of the cemetery bodies that meets the setback? I read part of that law. I'm sorry, so, Go ahead. So, Patrick Kelly said cremation would be fine. Right. 
So I'm pretty sure, um, thank you, because that's what I have read as well. You know, that, that there would be different sec could be different sections of that, but we still have to survey the the property to understand mm -hmm. where the actual distribution of water actually is going to be. That's really the big deal here. And if we do it the right way, we understand where the ledge is as well, because in a correct survey, we'll understand the depth to bedrock in these different locations. And we understand exactly, you know, where you can put where, where you can put a casket in. Right. Um, it, and it's, I think this it's, is a geologist speaking to so. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's worth all of our time to understand actually where you can put caskets in. Right. If if we decide to do this, and I think that we're in general agreement that we haven't decided on anything, it would also be really useful to know where we actually can get to depth because the state decides that. It's not the select board and it's not the cemetery commission. If we can't get to depth, we're out of luck. If we do get to depth, we're perfect. And if we're on the setbacks, we're also perfect. But if we actually define that with a really reasonable survey, this can not be a big deal. But we don't know. And if you're willing to meet us halfway, I mean, you're doing the property, We're which is great. Right, right. It, first option looking at it, it's like the, the spot directly behind it is, seems to be ideal. Chuck? It doesn't quite meet setback, but I mean, setbacks, I mean, you're not supposed to build within 75 feet if there's a building 20 feet there. So yeah, I know. We can't, we can't do that anymore. <laughs> but this, these were built um, we can't. almost 200 oh, years I mean, ago. I understand, I understand. For, you know, you don't want to put a septic system there. But, you know, for certain usages, like this one, um, we it, might be okay. It, you might be able to get yeah. a variance for, you know, if the setback's 200 feet, well, we're going to make it 180. Or if it's 160, we're going to make it 130. Or we, something. Just, we just want to make sure that uh, our, our adjacent coordinates are actually functional. Right. And Otherwise, yeah. And we want to work for everyone, our neighbors and everything. And, um, you know, to be setbacks are guideline, and obviously you can vary from them. You can, but. So, but um, you're not going to vary from them if you're going to put in, you know, if we're for a lagoon if or, we're, or, yeah. or, or a leach field, you know, for an eight bedroom apartment building. So I agree. And I think that's why if we follow the state guidelines and get it surveyed a little bit, yeah. we'll know exactly what we're into. No big deal. And it won't take us very long to do it. Go ahead, Patty. Um, Drew McSweeney was the um, surveyor that I called. And he said if there has a survey of your land, it costs a lot less if your land survey is then yeah. you know. Okay. So, Bear, could we meet you and have someone come out and yeah. do a basic survey? Actually, I think the surveys are in the town. Should be. Yeah, we yeah, actually have like a, this is like the perfect moment to do it because we actually have a crew that is here that we could take advantage of, so. Yes. Yeah. Is that all right? Um, so I'd like to hear from Patty and or Pat on how the Cemetery Commission feels about this and how they feel that we should proceed. Well, I can only speak for myself, and I personally, if I lived in West Woodbury, I would want to be buried in West Woodbury because mm -hmm. it is a place unto itself. Mm -hmm. But I'm only one fifth of the decision making mm -hmm. process. When will you be meeting again? Um, we can call for a meeting, you know, in the next couple of weeks, probably. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, five people's schedules. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, I, I would. Prefer that we proceed after um, some kind of uh, consensus or some kind of a statement from the cemetery commission, um, and I will contact the LCT um, tomorrow to find out who actually in town of the town groups has the kind of final say. Um, I mean, the select board is in charge of the purse strings, and we can offer other town money to help pay for this project. Um, 
but uh, I don't know if it's up to the Cemetery Commission or the Select Board to actually make a final decision. And this is a problem, it's a gray area, Tim, um, with other, like the library trustees, they're also elected officials, um, and just, I think I need to know as a select board member who actually, um, and how much autonomy those different elected officials have over um, the select board. Um, so just something that I want to answer for myself. Yes, Pat. I just would like for the commission to know what we're getting into. Right. When Russell put the three bars like this tall, mm -hmm. it's on every, it's so that you can find it again with a magnet, so you know where your lines are. Mm -hmm. And he pounded those in. I mean, there's a bunch of these. There's a lot of them. And they're like, he served, they're survey lines. So right. that it, I mean, we're responsible for, for when people get a site, to know what they get, and there's not something wrong with it. Mm -hmm. And I know how many there are, how many, or you know, whether there's ledge down there. I mean, there's, there's actually, aside from the problem of water and where you're going to move it on the surface, there's quite a bit of knowing what we're getting into here because right. it's going to cost enough without having additional problems. And I just like to know that there's somebody responsible for like answering some of these questions or getting somebody to study it and giving out an assessment of what, what that thing is like underneath. Um. One of your select persons, Chris, will take responsibility for that. I have the equipment and I can contract with people who can. So you're testing down as well as. Yes, ma'am. Getting your lines and so on. Yeah, so it's just on the surface. We understand what's in the, in the subsurface. So, yes, ma'am. And, and would you we'll, be able to. Make sure that, that we can do that. Would you be able to produce a written document for um, yep. 80 years from now? When? Yep. Okay. All right. So, yes, ma'am. I have a bunch of Norwich students who would be thrilled to be a great do project. Exactly that current <laughs> project. So, free. So, does any other questions? Does it sound like we're kind of getting somewhere as a way to move forward on this? Project? Is, is there a state person who can come out and? Yes, ma'am. I can interact with I can interact with someone from the state who can actually take a look at it as well. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, miss. Yes, miss. Uh, there is a. Yes, I can. I can ask someone from 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 the state to come out with me and review the project. Bear, can we come out and take a look at your property? All right. So, so I think that maybe you and I should get in contact directly. Okay. And I'll... 279. Bring it in. 279. 279-0443. So it sounds like we have a person to oversee this project uh, sitting to my left. Um, and so we'll work with the mind. cemetery commission too and the landowners. Oh, well. So okay. if you don't mind me getting in contact with you, no. I'll bring some gear out and I'll bring someone from the state. And then once we've done the initial survey, you know, we can bring someone in who can do it formally. But we'll make sure that we're in good shape and then we can make sure that the setbacks are appropriate in terms of distance. Does that sound reasonable to everybody? Oh yeah, I think everyone's on the same page. If it's happened all the time, they get over and uh, with the, I mean, my will, uh, if we can move my will, it'd be easier. I mean, I wouldn't put it there out, uh, but it is there. I, I don't think that that's necessary. Right. So, I think that a well, slight, a and not a very cheap option I mean, either. You know, this, if this well's going to restrict me to what I can go on my side of the road, you might have to look here. Well, that's a different discussion, and we're not going to get into that one well, tonight. <laughs> that's all right. And, um, I think that the we will I'll have on the agenda for the next select board meeting um, so that we can uh, warn it uh, the town uh, will probably if all of our select board members agree pay for the surveying so the cemetery commission isn't out that that money yeah right um, but we can't make that decision tonight because it's not on the warning, the agenda, um, but it will be on the next meeting agenda. But we can work on this before yeah. that. Yeah. And I think at some point, we don't know what we have. 
So at some point after you guys yeah. and well, students do your magic, you can actually say, you know, Pat, this is what we have. We have this many blocks that are in depth. We can understand some, some sort of district. No right. So we're running into a van water or a or thing like that. It's stuff like where are people going to park? I mean, we had to work out those questions, you know, just thinking about the water, access, where you park, what you're getting when you're paying for your plot. Well, what we can give you basically is a general idea and depth of bedrock and a general survey. And then that gives a professional surveyor a really good set of information that they can take advantage of. But they will not do depth of bedrock, which we can do. So if, if that sounds reasonable to you all, then we can move forward. And we can do it in the next few, 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 okay. few weeks, right. reasonably. So you if you don't... Yes, please. It's 371 8901 can I have your name again? I'm sorry. Tim. Tim. Thanks, Tim. I'm Chris. Now, if you talk to Bear, I could have put him on the hill if you need. I've got one of the goats right there. Just says that. Okay. Thank you for your time. Mm -hmm. That might be great. Okay. Anything else at all concerning this? Okay. Good. Well, thanks. That was good discussion, and I'm glad that we seem to have come to an agreement. Okay? Appreciate it. Continue the discussion outside so we can get back to our meeting. Thank you. Sorry. And thanks. Thanks for coming. See you. Take care, guys. Okay. So, Chuck, looks like the highway report is up next. So, okay. we lost all our people, but that's okay. <laughs> that's all right. Chris uh, Davis. Jay McDonald's talking mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and said that he wondered if the amount of stones scare us off. The amount of money scared us off. The amount of stones, 20,000 yeah. yards, yeah. the amount of money. And I said that was a big part of it. Mm -hmm. And he told me that uh, he'd like to talk with me about a smaller amount. Okay. But Elfie Larrabee from East Cows, mm -hmm. the commissioner, mm -hmm. went out and saw the product and he wasn't impressed with it at all. He wasn't? No. Not okay. impressed. No. Oh. Too many shares. Mm -hmm. uh, that was an issue that we discussed. Yeah. Okay. It's, so, a, it's crushed granite. It's yeah, crushed granite. Yeah. And not a lot of dust. I mean, it continues to be great. There's not a lot of funds. It doesn't. To, you know, little funds that's not going to crush the funds. That's yeah. not the kind of rock that crushes the funds. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. No. It's going to be raw aggregate. So I told Chris that I would talk to you guys tonight, mm -hmm. folks tonight, and 
I would get back on him, but I didn't think that it was going to be an option for us either. All right. Uh, good. Well, uh, I would prefer that we just let it go entirely. Okay. Um, but Chris may have a different opinion. And well, it was so attractive. Mm -hmm. it, was, it, was cheap, it, was, it was cheap and close and easy. Well, yeah, but it didn't turn out to be cheap. We're buying it Not over as cheap Bedford. as I thought it was going to be. No, no. no. We're mm -hmm. buying it over in Bedford for 10 cents a year less than we could get it up here. Yeah, I mean, and so really the difference is the trucking costs, and all of a sudden that doesn't become a big deal. Especially and the loader, having to take that all the way up and load it would offset quite yeah, a lot of trucking. Yeah, if the snow is not appropriate. All right. Mm -hmm. I told him I'd bring it up to you. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's we're doing. Okay. But I told yeah. him I told him in my opinion that I didn't think that we were gonna be interested in that. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid that we'll have to I'll call Chris and tell him the same thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, um, I mean I, I guess I have to have a motion from the town to do so, but No you don't. No, okay. we turned it down at our lady. We we, we did last week. Yeah, we did decide um, not to do it. Um, okay. But you don't need other select board members of a permission to contact and speak to, to somebody. Him. Yeah. Yeah. No. So Chuck, with your with with your sort of you know permission, yeah. I guess we'll just say no. Yeah. Well, I really think we should. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, like you say, it was very attractive when it was $10 a year, but right now. Yeah, it became more more expensive, and if it's not appropriate in terms right. of the quality of stone. Well, stone-up. we can use it for ditching stone and stuff, but I mean. We can get ditching stone anywhere, Chuck. Yeah. And we can get it cheap. Yeah, so. we don't use that much. Yeah. So, I'm trying to. Just walk, walk mm -hmm. away. Walk away. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess it's too bad in a way, but it just didn't work. Well, it is. It is. So, that's what it is. It is. And Saturday, I met with all council. Mm -hmm. It's new parking lot here. Mm -hmm. And you said he's very happy with it. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, we've got the back to the seat, but it needs to dry out for a day before we do that. Mm -hmm. But I believe everything else is done. Mm -hmm. To go check it out. And uh, Saturday, I had a gentleman call me from Beer. Well, no, he called me Friday. His name was Steve, but I don't remember his last name, and I didn't think to look in the pad for him. Mm -hmm. uh, about the class four part of uh, the North Road. Was it Steve Frazier? Steve Frazier? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yep. And I went up and place. had a lengthy talk with the two folks that were saying they didn't want the road fixed and they couldn't okay. fix the road. Okay. I um, told them that they were going to fix the road. Okay, so you did speak to them? Yes. Okay. Yep. And then when I talk, I returned his call. Well, I returned his call and then I went up and talked to him and I called him back. He is interested in the town cutting brush on a class four road. And I said, that don't happen on a class four road, right. but I'm gonna run it by the slot line. I, well, one thing, um, I'm familiar with the situation there with the younger couple and Steve. Um, he's part of the Nichols Pond Association, which right. I am also. Um, he was trying to cut brush there. Um, and the young couple told him that he couldn't. Um, and he knew that he could, but he stopped. Um, so I think we could tell um, the folks that are, that are living there now that, um, that this a town right of way. They only own an acre of land. On oh, that really? road. Yeah. Well, let me, let me finish telling you what I told you. Okay, all right, okay. I went down there and she said that they couldn't cut grass on her side. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, we can't cut our shoulders. Mm -hmm. And the guy spoke up and he said, well, he said, I ride around on the back roads and I see people that have signs up saying, please don't go fox. Right. I said, yeah, that's true. And when it's brought to my attention, I go and tell him, either you cut the brush 
keep it on the road where you don't want them on, or we're going to come back and crash. Mm -hmm. And we're going to cut it back. Right. And he agreed that he would cut the brush on their stuff. Okay. For their one acre of their, their acre of plantation. However, however, big, however yeah. much okay. they own. That's fine. Yeah. So uh, they're made well aware that if they don't cut it, something else is going to happen. Okay. And of course, you know, where they live is like three mile, three or four miles out on the end of that class four road. Um, it's a ways out. It is a ways out, yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's not that far, because we yeah. only own a mile and a quarter. Okay, all right. But it's probably it's out there. half a mile out there. It's, it's beyond where the last road into East Long Camps, yeah. camps turns off. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Just, just beyond, actually. Yeah. 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 So, that sounds good. Yeah. I, there was, and there's a woman up there that owns a camp beside this Steve Frazier that has said that she is, she was, she hired her son. He was bringing a lot of lead in or gravel or whatever mm -hmm. they were using. Mm -hmm. And they told him he couldn't spread it, so he didn't dare to spread it. The, the young couple told him that? Yeah. Okay. So I told Steve Frazier that when they decided to spread that out there, mm -hmm. that if they give me a call, I'll meet them up there on the first floor. Okay. And make sure that they understand. That it's a town, it's still a town road. It's, it it's a town road. It's a town road. It is. And I told them that we could take 25 feet on each side if we needed to. And right. We didn't want to come down and do that, but we no. could. No. Of course, yeah. So Steve has actually researched what is and what isn't a town road up there, um, and the actual class four town road um, just beyond their property um, goes in a line um, to the Cadet line. Um, right now, there's a, like a trailer deer camp there, and, yeah. and they have a cable across the actual town road, town which road. which is illegal. And the other road, the, the road that's better maintained, was actually. Built, um, I think it was built by E.B. Hyde for logging, I'm not right. sure, but that's what everybody has used for many, many years now as the town road, but technically that's a private, private road. land. Yeah, it's a private road, so it's a little confusing up there what's what. Um, well, they, they weren't asking for us to do anything as far as going beyond the young couple that are up there. Right. And they're actually going to do that themselves too. Mm -hmm. And that's why I told them that I would be in up there, so trying to keep the camera out of the water, trying to put a truck in there. Okay, right. But um, they're not asking us to go out through it, they're just... Right. And you know, the, the road... Um the road into the camps, like that last turn before you go straight um, to where this young couple right. um, is living now, um, the camp owners on both of the north and the south road into East Long, they uh, will periodically, um, usually once a year, every other year, will come to the town and request gravel from the town, and then they do all of the maintenance work right. on the road. Right. Um, so I'm not sure if you were aware of, of that was, history. Yeah. They haven't used their gravel on this year, so I would be yeah. a little reluctant to I saw, I saw the pile still there. Yeah. yeah. And Steve Frazier, and um, he actually, I think there were two um, camp owners on Nichols that paid to have the road um, improved down to, um, to the backside of Nichols, to their camps. Right. Um, and then there was a logger that illegally used the road um, for his logging and tore and destroyed everything that they had done. Um, but uh, I know Steve has put in quite a bit of money and time um, yeah. to, to do that. So Now there's a stretch probably on maybe a tenth and a half or two tenths of a mile long from where you go by the stop sign and head down into the road with mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Top bar. They've done some on the end. Okay. But it's only probably just about an acre. Mm -hmm. Long, yeah. where they need, they need some attention. Yeah. But the rest of it is pretty good shape. I drove all the way up to the top of the hill, it goes down to two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Well, well, on that road, you know, there's where these folks are living, and then beyond that on the right is where yeah. some people did live for a while, and there's a lot of junk and yeah, that's an some, awful mess. Some, yeah, it's an awful mess. Um, and then right after that awful mess is yeah. where the actual town road bears to the right, and yeah. the newer, better road um, forks to the left. Um, yeah. And actually, it kind of goes straight, but uh, um, right. So, and that's the, um, that's where you know that that part of the actual town road um, is pretty much trashed, right. and, and there was the logger that did that. Um, and then when you get to the Cabot line, Cabot has discontinued the rest of that road that comes out um, on the Guy Coit's Pond. Pond. Yeah, they've totally discontinued yeah. that road, um, and it's unless you've got a pretty high four-wheel drive truck, it's pretty... It's impassable. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that road, that's the kind of thing where, you know, you kind of wonder, well, um, you know, there, there is minimal responsibility for a town with the class four roads, um, but some of those roads that just are still designated as class four roads that the town, no one really uses that much. Um, right. Do we continue? Do we, um, you know, reclassify it as a trail? Um, you know, it, there's a number of roads like that in town that yeah. it's a major project to deal with and it's something that I've always thought about, but <laughs> well, time. Like without the taxpayers being out there on this side, I would think it would be kind of hard to mm -hmm. throw out a lot. Yeah, no, I, I would not. I don't want to throw up any class four road. I would prefer to classify it down to a trail where the town still owns it, right. but we let go of any type of maintenance. Um, I think that's a good idea on some of those. Yeah, yeah. I think up there it might be. Mm -hmm. But there are other ones that maybe we should, but we need to do an inventory. We can do that. We can yeah, do it. There, actually, there is an inventory. There's an inventory that we can actually take advantage yeah. of. Yeah. So. But yeah. Okay, so thanks for dealing with that situation. I was aware of that from about a year. The folks have been living there. This might, I think this is their last winter was their first full winter living there. Um, so, um, so they haven't been there. They've been there over a year now, but a little right. less. Um, right. It is what I told them. I don't defend it. This is what you choose to do, you should be right. doing it. But yeah. don't, don't uh, impede on other people's right. wishes too. Uh, right. It's terrible and they have as much right to use it too. Yeah, I might, I know them a little bit um, from different things. I might go and try to talk to them too, but um, we'll see if I have the well, time. Well, time well, later. Sure. well, probably better than now I agree. Yeah. When I left, it seemed like everything was okay. Yep, still working. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that the, they understand it and they're just working around. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Best thing to do is set back and relax. And mm -hmm. so. Pull up a chair and watch. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and other than that, we're we're uh, ditching uh, from the black up the warehouse. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. Uh, we put a 12 inch culvert in there. Uh, we're putting an 18 inch culvert up by. Chris Green's? Chris Green's, yep. yeah, just mm -hmm. beyond there tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we're going to finish ditching it over through there. And we put some gravel on that road earlier, but right by Chris Green's is quite a lot of that shit coming up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're going to raise that road a little bit, try to keep from putting culvert across the gravel. Okay. I can't see how we can do it and not make a mess. Right. Yeah, there's ledge really tight to either side of the road there. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, I guess the next thing we will probably start on, but we're going to do some more brush cutting as the weather mm -hmm. keeps us from doing other, other things. things. Okay. And uh, I'm trying to get a hold of the guy, John, you said? Yeah. 
the school to find out what the, the uh, what they got going on this time. Okay, I have um, his contact information. Uh, Robin has it too. Okay. I okay. just we've been busy this week and I yeah. had a chance, but okay. um, I want us get that practice lot finished up in the school mm -hmm. and then we'll want to the grant for the cabaret. Okay, great. Yeah. Good. And I still have to put together the RFP for the grant um, for the box culvert here. That's on my list. Um, to do, um, it's most of this grant is just for the design work, so you know that could happen anytime, really. So, um, but it is pretty getting pretty close to the top of my list. Um, <laughs> I did uh, get the report put together um, for the Valley Lake Road, um, and that's been submitted, um, and we should be. We could have spent a whole lot more money on that, but. We didn't have. We, I mean, the grant was for eighteen thousand dollars. We spent about eight thousand. Um, yeah. But you know, you don't have to spend the whole amount. You know. Right. So. Um, well, once in a while, probably going to throw the ball in the Right. Yeah. Maybe they'll put that aside, and, and next time we apply for a grant from Better Roads, we'll. Right. <laughs> get, we might uh, get some right. generosity. Right. <laughs> um, Let's see. And so, um, yeah, we have a meeting um, uh, set up with Shauna Clifford and probably some other folks from VTrans for this Friday. Uh, at 7.30, we'll meet at the post office. Okay. Probably go right up to Valley Lake Road and look at that, um, you know, um, the bypass that we've been talking about. Right. Um, I don't know if the landowners would be able to, they might be interested in being there, but they don't have to be there, but. Um, they might be, and I don't know the names. I, I can find the names, I can't remember it right at the moment. I um, got his number somewhere, but. Yeah. Jim? I, you know, I, I'm trying to remember their last name more than their, I have it on my computer from some email. About this long, what about every letter of the alphabet in it? No, that's okay. not. No, that's not them. Um, I'll find it. Um, I can find they're it. They're very nice people. They're very nice. Yeah, and they're definitely. You know, they it would be on their property, and they're definitely all for this. So that makes right. life a whole lot easier. Yes. But yeah, where are we? Where, where are we meeting? Uh, we're going to meet right here at the post office, and then we'll probably drive up to the site. Um, look at that, and then I'm, I'm going to talk to them about the granite blocks that have caved oh, in yeah. over here, um, and just figure out who is actually responsible for those. Whether it's be V transfers, if it's in the right of way, yeah, uh, yeah, V transfers. As far as I can understand, from right. what I've looked at, yeah. Well, yeah. they have control of a lot of ways in the state of Montana. Right. Yeah. Yeah, there may be somebody else that has something to say about the water. Um, sure. Yeah. Um, but that fellow that, um, is it Bob Ross? He, and uh, that's the old painter on TV, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Patrick that? Ross. Patrick Ross. <laughs> yeah. um, when we were doing a last look at the, we had a look at the stream, that was a year last summer, I think. <laughs> Patrick Ross is kind of the stream person that works with VTrans on projects. So, um, uh, you know, it, it may be that we need to, to have him look at it too. Yeah. Um, I'll take a look. So, yeah, um, good. So yeah, that's, that's we're gonna meet at 7.30 and then head up okay. to the top of the hill on Valley Lake Road and look okay. look at that site. That'll probably take us a little bit of time, I would think. Um, yeah, I'll be doing it until about quarter to 10. Okay, all right. right. Well, that's why, that's why Shauna wanted to meet early too, because you know she has uh, a day ahead of her also. Um, yeah. So getting this done, um, and then she can get on to, we'll, we'll definitely be done by then. Yeah. Yeah, sounds um, good. And they're basically going to be just advising us and giving us a sense of what what we need to do and and whether or not they think it's worth reasonable. Yeah, reasonable um, to to do that. Um, so so you'll probably be the tour leader up there. Okay. <laughs> Share your ideas and and yeah. uh, they'll give you some feedback on. Well, I'm not with the I would say I'm not with the homeowner or the landowner's plus. So mm -hmm. They, I can tell them what I told them. And yeah. At least we'll all be on the same page. Yeah. Both yeah. Uh, let's see. 
So we talked about the, th the third full-time road crew members. Sounds like we have a plan um, of time to meet, tentative time. We'll make sure that works for Paul's schedule. Um, and then we'll go from there with that. I can't think of anything else for the, the to add to the town highway report. Um, any? No, okay. All right. Thanks, sir. Yeah. So um, I guess the next thing on the agenda is the town hall, um, and the first item on the agenda, um, you know, um, is that. It seems to be town consensus that we really need to paint the outside of the town hall this summer. And we do have a person in town, uh, Richard Patton, I'll say his name, um, who painted the post office a couple of years ago, or maybe it was even last summer, can't remember, who is willing to paint the town hall. Um, and um, I have a feeling that the way other contractors are booked out, that that's probably our best bet. And um, he's a town resident and does a good job. Um, yes, I have no problem with um, the select board approving um, to have Richard Patton paint the town hall this summer. Um, Did we get a quote? We have no quote at all yet. Um, so we probably should get that. Um, that would be. I'm sorry. That sounds reasonable, right? To get a quote yeah. first. Yeah. Okay. I think so. Yeah. Um, so we'll get a quote from Richard. Um, but as far as I know, as long as the quote is reasonable, I think that we would probably go ahead with with Richard doing the work, and and I would be surprised if it isn't. So, um, but yeah, let's ask. Um, I can get a hold of him, and we'll ask him for a quote. Um, so technically with our town purchasing policy, anything between a thousand and eight thousand dollars, we should uh, at least uh, get in contact with um, at least two other three. It mentions three, three or more, um, no less than three um, contractors be contacted to get a, a estimate. Um, and then um, and then we would choose from there. Um, so. Um, so whether we choose to kind of forego getting other contractors um, and just if the... Well, it's going to be really easy. We're going to reach out to regional contractors and they're all going to say no. Right. That, that's my assumption, um, just <laughs> especially at this time of, of year. Yeah. Um, so we'll see what Richard comes up with for a price. And, um, yep. Kind of. And uh, then... Um, for the kind of long range um, renovations to the town hall, I did get to speak to Mary Jo Llewellyn, um, who Diana had recommended. Um, uh, and she, Mary Jo had offered to oversee um, a committee to kind of work out a plan um, uh, for the town hall. Um, so, um, yeah, I wrote some notes down in my book. But she is a uh, state. Uh, uh, historical architect or something. She has a wealth of knowledge on what needs to be done. Um, and she, um, she is gonna, she recommended a couple other people in town um, that could be on this, it'd be an ad hoc committee. I know Robin um, is interested in being on that committee. Um, and she was gonna get in touch with, um, is it Elizabeth Pritchett? Yes. Yeah. To see if, if she might be interested, um, even though she lives in Callis now, she did, you know, used to live in Woodbury. Um, so, and then um, I have a couple people that I'm going to call. And, um, but she mentioned that you know because the town hall is on the national register, um, any implementation that we might try to do um, that would use state or federal money, um, there would have there would be an approval process from the Nas national uh, historic uh, register, whatever it is, um, group. So the so there are some strings attached in what we could do if we are using. Um, state or federal money, like a, a grant or something, um, which is probably about the only way we'd ever be able to afford to do something here. Um, 
She mentioned the Preservation Trust, which is a, a um, they do um, have small grants for planning, um, so we may, um, that may be a route to go. Um, but she, and you know, she basically knows all of the steps and how to proceed. Um, so I think if we can get some town residents that are willing to just kind of meet to discuss this, um, um, she'll give us a roadmap for how to proceed, um, and then we'll we'll start. Um, I mentioned uh, that we had talked about getting um, efficiency of Vermont in here, and she thought that was a great idea. That would help with the planning. They, they could actually give us some idea of what we would need to do to the building to um, make it more energy efficient. Um, and that could be part of the planning process. So I, I'm willing to call them. I will call them. Um, and I'll make these calls. So just a couple other people in town that she mentioned and probably will put something out on front porch for them. There may be other people that are interested in being uh, part of this. Uh, the more people, the, the better, I think, um, as far as I'm concerned. Um, to get people involved. Um, so we'll try to get this started um, before the month ends, I think. Maybe try to have a first meeting. Um, it probably will be, you know, fairly informal and not a whole lot of time commitment to, to just work out a plan um, for what we can do in the town hall. Um, so that's it with the, the town hall, unless anybody has other Questions or comments? We're good. Okay. Um, so updates. Another business. The personnel policy. I did make the changes that um, uh, Joe Muir suggested in the personnel policy, and then I sent it to the next person in line at VLCT that will. Um, and I haven't heard a thing from them at all. Um, it was a couple of weeks ago that I sent it, let's say 10 days ago, that I sent it in. Uh, what we'll be getting next from VLCT is um, the director um, and the legal team will come up with a cost to the town for doing a legal review of the personnel policy. Um, and then it would be up to the select board to either uh, approve or disapprove of the expense um, and it will be much less than a regular lawyer. Um, it's part of their services. And then they'll do a legal review of it. Um, and so we'll have a document that, um, that is, covers all the legal bases. And, and then what we'll do with the personnel policy is give it to the road crew, to uh, our road commissioner, to the town clerk, town treasurer, um, anybody that's in, pretty much involved in the personnel policy and have them uh, give it a look over and then um, hear them out on any suggestions that they might have. Um, uh, and, then, um, and then the select board at some point in time will officially approve it and that'll be our personnel policy going forward until we revise it again. <laughs> a few years down the road, that seems to be this, the way it happens. Um, that's pretty much it on the, uh, the agenda. Um, any other business? Anything that anybody wants to bring up before we adjourn? Sounds pretty quiet. We're a, kind of a skeleton crew here. Yeah. Um, so do I hear a motion, motion to, adjourn? to adjourn? I'll second it. And by seconding it, the total quorum of the select board also approves that we adjourn.